But if we're not getting to the root yeah. of why we keep getting to that point, yeah. why we keep people pleasing, why we mm -hmm. keep, you know, sacrificing ourselves, why we don't feel like we're worthy of care, we're just going to keep doing it. Yeah. Oftentimes we talk about living balanced. You know, I hear that question a lot. How do you stay balanced with career, with kids, with marriage, with life, with ministry? And, you know, I think it looks different in different seasons. But one thing that has really stuck out to me is some advice my dad gave me when I was a little girl. And he said, human beings are like a well. And if you want to keep pouring out and pouring out and pouring out, you better believe that you've got to stop and get filled at some point. Because if you just keep pouring out without the balance of being filled, eventually you'll get to the bottom of your well. Mm. And what's at the bottom of the well? It's no longer fresh water. Mm. It's all the junk, you know? It's all of the mud-laced water. And you don't want to give that to anyone to drink. Mm -hmm. And that imagery has really stuck in my mind over the years of like, what am I actually giving people? And am I giving out of a place of fullness? Or am I giving out of place of emptiness? And mm -hmm. so for me, one thing that has kept me in balance is asking myself that question on a regular basis on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being the most full, how full do I feel? And what do I need from the Lord in order to be filled? And sometimes the answer is the Lord's like, what do I need you to do mm -hmm. in order to be filled, you know? And so that has been something that has just really been on my heart lately. And I, when I look through scripture, I feel like there's such a balance for us to stay in balance. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is a verse that comes to mind is love your neighbor as you love yourself. And I know that so many times we look at that verse of the importance of loving your neighbor and loving them as you love yourself. And, and so we we practice that, especially Christians, mm -hmm. we talk about love your neighbor. You got to love your neighbor as well. You've got to love people well. But we sort of just gloss over the part that says, as you love yourself. And why I really appreciate that scripture as a counselor is because I feel like it keeps us in balance Love your neighbor as you love yourself. There are some people who love their neighbor way more than themselves mm. and they burn out mm. and they run dry and they're empty and they have one-sided relationships and they're like, this isn't the abundant life. But then there's other people who love themselves way more than they love <laughs> their neighbor, <laughs> you know? And even mm -hmm. there, you're self-centered. You push people away from your life. You're not giving in a way that you need to give. And so I see scripture as so balanced, mm, so intentionally good. balanced. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Like, let's keep it here so that we're healthy people. Mm, that's really good. And, and so I, I'm curious to hear as you have you know, try to live in balance. I know this is not a once and done thing. It's like every morning is a balancing act mm -hmm. all over again mm -hmm. with the different weights that were given for mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. But what are some ways that you have chosen to keep balance? What are some things that you find work? Some people even say, I don't think balance exists. You can't have a balanced life if you're a mom or if you're in ministry. Um, I would disagree with that, but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on being balanced. I want to ask you a question first as a counselor. Yeah. <laughs> you say that you would say to yourself on a scale of one to 10, how full do I feel? How do you measure that? That is a good question. I would say emptiness for me looks like fatigue, irritability. Mm. I'm not productive. I'm not able to concentrate. I'm not motivated. Yeah. I'm sleep deprived. I'm short with the people around me. Um, I might even start to sense like my emotions are off, mm -hmm. like high, heightened level of, of anxiety or, or depression in my body, um, more aches and pains than usual, headaches. Like it's almost like it's, it's all connected. Yeah. And I do believe there are signs of burnout. Like you're starting to, to, near, to inch towards this place of emptiness. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, I, I got to fill up, mm -hmm. you know, I got I to gotta do something about this before... I, I crash. 
You know, if you think about your life like a bucket, when you are empty, you've got nothing inside to give to others. And so it's really important to stay filled so that the overflow of that is what goes into your life, your marriage, your family, your children, your calling. So many times we're empty and we expect those other relationships to fill us up. And guess what? They can't. They don't have that kind of power. But imagine if we could feel filled the way that God intends for us to be filled. Imagine we could have that abundant life that God says that we can have. Imagine if we could give out of our overflow instead of our emptiness. I believe it will not only change us, but I believe it has the power to change the world. And I think it's interesting to think every person finds what that fill up thing is different too. Like what would fill me up isn't going to be the same. So you have to identify also what does fill you up. Yeah. And some people, you know, it's kind of like the gas gauge on your car. I wish we all had a, a gauge on us that's like, <laughs> oh, you're near me. <laughs> you know, and some of us like to like, I'm the type of person, the second it gets to quarter tank mm -hmm. on my car, I need to find a gas station. Mm -hmm. I'm no. not risking it. Oh. My husband, on the other hand, will will glide in on fumes. Yeah, yeah. that's you know? 20 more miles. Oh, come on. I've got 10 more miles. And I feel like we, we're like that also mm -hmm. with yeah. uh -huh. True. our balance is mm -hmm. like some of us are like, I'm just going to go, 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 go until there's nothing and left yeah. and others are like I, I need to be aware usually the ones like me who need to be aware it's because we've crashed in the past <laughs> and we don't want to go there again you yeah. know mm -hmm. so what are some ways you you stay filled you stay balanced one of the things I would say to that is I can tell that in myself one of the ways when I'm not full is when I want to withdraw from people mm. now I'm by nature more of an introvert so even though I, I love days like this I also enjoy time. I, I refill by being alone with the Lord. But when I'm just kind of withdrawing from people, then I know, you know what? That's kind of a red flag for me. Mm. Because back when I was dealing with more severe clinical depression, that's all I wanted to do. Mm, I just wanted right. to mm -hmm. not see anybody. I basically wanted to put the cover over my head and just be away. Right. So if I feel myself even veering slightly toward that, then that's a warning sign for me. Right. And I have yeah. these three girls that I call my safe sisters. And, and they're the, the ones I can say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm not doing so great. Mm -hmm. And just even, even if we have to just jump on a, you know, FaceTime call with each other. Same. It's just to have those that will speak life to me and speak mm -hmm. truth to me and, and just call me to be to get back on the island, you know, because I tend to vote myself off the island before you decide it's time for me to get off the mm -hmm. island. Mm -hmm. And that's just a danger thing for me. It's mm. yeah. But I think it's one of the great things about learning about life is not seeing our weaknesses as devastating anymore, but just things to pay attention to. They're signals. Yeah, the signals, signals. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. How do you personally know that you're starting to get into that yellow, red zone of emptiness? I know that, um, you know, fatigue can be that, some of the things that you were mentioning, but I look at what are the best parts of myself yeah. that I'm not able to access. Love that. So one of the things that I'm going to do well when I'm full is I will have creativity. Mm -hmm. I'm not an artist, I'm not a painter, but I am a writer. And when I find that there are no words to be said, mm -hmm. then that's usually an, an indicator that I'm running on empty. That's good, that's Chris. Good. Or yeah. if I am trying to figure out new and creative ways to engage with people, um, I have all the ideas mm -hmm. until I'm empty. And as you were talking about isolation, I was thinking, you know, Earlier this week, when we were talking about Sabbath and the stillness that goes along with that, there's a difference between healthy stillness, healthy silence, and unhealthy isolation. Right. Um, running away mm -hmm. from the things yeah. that breathe life. And so while I'm also an introvert, I do enjoy being around people where the relationships are meaningful to me. And so if I am not making room for that, in yeah. fact, slightly irritated thinking about it, you know, looking <laughs> yeah, at the phone yeah. and thinking, oh, if they call me again, mm. you know, then the question is, why do I not want to engage mm, right. with relationships that are important to me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, what would I normally gravitate towards if I was in a good place yeah. that I'm not intentionally making room for, for or avoiding mm. actually doing it? There have been several times in my life when I feel as if my life has got out of balance. And I can tell in lots of different ways. You know, I get tired or short with somebody and I just feel as if 
I don't want to do any of the things I used to get excited about. And I think the first thing is simply, A, don't judge yourself, you know, we're, we're human, God knows that. Um, but then just pause and really ask the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is such a friend to you and I. Ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom. Even just sit down with a, a notebook and a pencil and ask the Holy Spirit, where are the areas in my life where I've allowed things to get out of balance? It might be how much TV you're watching. It might be, you know, how much time you're going shopping. It might be how many times you show up at church. It can be all sorts of things. We will want to find balance so that we're able, when, when we show up somewhere, to, to bring our whole selves to the table and not to be so worn out that we have nothing left to give. When I evaluate areas in my life that feel burdensome, things that I know I'm so grateful for, or things that I've prayed for even, that when I find myself drudging through them or having to talk myself into it, and it's like, I, I love the things, these are things I've prayed for, mm. Or, and not that it's ever really my family, but just even the things that kids are involved in that I'm so happy to, that they're involved in become like, I can't believe we have to do this one more time. Then I start thinking maybe there's been too much added onto the plate. The thing that's interesting though, I've heard it said before and it resonated with me that balance doesn't mean equal time to everything. Right. That's not a balanced life that you That's are good. giving equal time to everything. We talked on the first day that the order that even God set up was that we would have six days to one day. So that isn't equal time. That's no, six days right. of work to one day Very of true. rest. Mm -hmm. Yet we know that in God's economy, he does with that one day right. of rest more than we can imagine. So in the same way, I have to remind myself, balance doesn't mean I'm a balanced life if I've given equal time to the job, to the kids, to the husband, right. to the whatever. That's mm -hmm. not balance. I think right. really where you find what your balance is, is when you look in front of you, you lay out before you all that God has given you to steward, whatever that might be. For me, it would be a family and, and a job and you know all of those things. And then you ask the Holy Spirit to order that. My husband is really big in systems. He's just, he <laughs> operates very efficiently because he has systems for everything. And I have seen it be a benefit in his life. He is the least stressed, least hurried person, mm. yet accomplishes <laughs> more. Mm. And I mean, it's just amazing to watch. And I've, over time, after 28 years, gone, there's something to this. Mm. <laughs> there's something to this systematic yeah. thinking right. that puts order to a day where you know, now there are seasons, I think, where the plate might be more full. Right. And you have to ask the Lord if everything on the plate is what he's given or have you added some things to it. But I do think for me, when I think about balance. It helps me when I don't think I have to give equal time to everything. And then I begin the internal work of asking the Holy Spirit to show me where then is the priority? Where is the, the bigger piece of the pie to the smaller piece of the pie? That's really funny you mentioned that it's not equal time in, in going back to that Sabbath one to six. And I might be overanalyzing this because I've been kind of sitting in this, um, I, I'm writing a book called Soul Care about how to care for your soul. And one of the things that I calculated was if you take the one to six ratio, do you know what it comes out to? About 85%. Mm. And so I thought to myself, I actually use that percentage in working with clients without even realizing mm -hmm. it was the one to six ratio of like living at 85% so that you have margin. So that you mm -hmm. can stay balanced, mm -hmm. whether that's with your money, mm -hmm. but also with your energy, mm -hmm. with your schedule, like having a margin. Mm -hmm. And so when I found out that one to six yeah. was actually about 85%, it just felt so like a Holy Spirit moment. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it ties in exactly with what you're saying. It's not like, okay, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, but making sure that I have space, I have margin mm -hmm. so that I can be balanced with my health, with what I need to stay fill as I'm as I'm pouring out. You know, creating margin in my life is not something that comes naturally. One, I always think I have more bandwidth than I actually do. And two, because 
I'm one that has to work hard to shorten my to-do list. They're always way too long. So what I've learned to do is just pad everything. Just decide in advance to give yourself more time, to take a little longer, to um, leave room for interruption, and to have space on your calendar, in your schedule, and on your lists everywhere um, for the thing that's unexpected. Because when you live with margin and the unexpected comes, you won't be frustrated. So literally, leave more room in your pantry for cups than the cups you already have. Leave more time in your schedule than the time you think it will take you to get to your appointment. Leave extra room on your legal pad for the things that will come to mind that you didn't plan on. Leave room in your closet for the clothes that you don't plan to buy. Make margin a part of how you operate because one, you'll leave less room for being frustrated and two, you'll leave more space for God to fill it with good things that you didn't anticipate. God wants us to do life together because we are better together. Connect with us on social media and share your favorite moments from today. We can't wait for you to join us. We have seven kids. 10 years apart, we have really paid attention to how God has said, like, it's me and you, then it's the marriage, then it's the kids, and then it's everything else. And so when I think about balance for me, it's like, okay, Lord, which relationships are most important? Mm -hmm. And so although we were, we had at one point had four kids, four and a half and under, they had needs. Wow. And I wanted to tend to their needs first because they were the loudest and they, and they deserved, I mean, they were babies, they were kids. But when I recognize that I still need time with you, Lord, I need time with my husband and I need time. It's interesting how all of it took care of itself mm. when I kept it in order. And so we do that now, even with seven kids, it's like, we have to have a date night. Like y'all will still eat. But right. it, I won't be there because I will be cutting up my own food with my <laughs> husband, which makes me a better mom that's a, that I'm more full, to talk about being full, to give out to you during the week if I have time. So it's just, for me, it's about, it's order. I love systems because people will see us maneuver. Like, how do you do? And I was like, in my systems. head, yeah. I have a system and I have worked that thing out. 20 iterations. I'm like, I, now I know how many steps, how do I... You know, like, I'm serious. Like, I have figured wow. out how to wow. get us out without being rushed. Mm -hmm. We have time, you know, and stuff happens. But I think for me, it's just recognizing with balance, it's like being present, what I'm doing, and also saying yes to the right things and no to the right things. That's good. Because yeah. I, there's a lot of balls that I juggle. Mm -hmm. Let's just imagine they're all crystal balls. They're all crystal balls. And this is, there's some things that are super important. But I had to look at my life and say, some of these things aren't crystal. They're like plastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so can I set something down? They're not as precious. They're not as precious. Mm -hmm. And so if they drop, it'll make a sound, but it's not mm -hmm. going to shatter. Mm -hmm. And so there's some things in my life that I'm juggling that are crystal ball. They're crystal. They're important. And I'm juggling and I'm balancing those things. It's like in our life, mm. we have to really think about what is our yes, what is super important yeah. that I can focus on and what looks important but is not important now. And sometimes really those balls that we're juggling, God never gave them to us, but right. other people did, or right. we feel obligated, right. or you know. Right. So even just determining, Lord, what's actually yours, what's right. actually from mm -hmm. you, not yes. just my my guilt, my obligation, my people pleasing tendencies, all of right. those things. Like what's actually from you here? I wish I could give you the one plus one equals two on how to find balance as a busy mom. Um, if that's out there, then I need it. But I will say this, I think there are things that our kids are gifted to do. Um, there are things that they want to try. And I think for us with so many kids, which we have seven, uh, we have to be mindful. And we are. Pr my husband and I are very prayerful about their talent. Like, Lord, show us their talent, show us their gifts and help us to seed into the, like put, put seed and soil around those things um, that bring them to life. And so I don't know if balance is a great word. I think it's just um, knowing when to say no and when to say yes. And that might mean there are some parties that they don't go to. Um, that might mean some activities that we have to wait until next season. It's just recognizing what we're capable of doing and saying, telling our kids, like, 
this is what I tell my kids. I say, you have to trust me that I want the best for you. And I want you to succeed. I want you to try a lot of things. We are also human. So if I say no to something right now, it doesn't mean not ever. It just means not now. And so a lot of conversation happens with, with us, between us and our kids because we want them to be balanced. We want them, I want them home for dinner. Like there will be a time where you won't be home for dinner. And so there's certain things that are important to our family. And when they step outside of that, we may have to say no. And so it's not really so much about balance, but for me, it's about, and for us, it's about finding out what is foundational and important to our family and being intentional behind our yeses and our noes when it comes to the things that our kids are involved in. Are you willing to have an open hand when it's seasonal, when something is brought in for a season mm -hmm. and then it changes? Right. Because right. I know for me, I remember um, this was when my oldest, who's now 23, and she was, it was her senior year of high school. And it was in a season where, you know, the Lord had just opened up some doors for me to, to travel and to speak and that sort of thing. And I hadn't really sought that out, but the Lord was clearly opening doors prior to her senior year. And and it was really a sweet season because I was walking in some gifting I didn't know I had. And there was really some great things about it. But my daughter's senior year, she was my firstborn, so I'd never had a senior before. And so it felt really, really hard that I was going to see this firstborn daughter now graduate. And these invitations would come in for speaking, and mm. I started being frustrated because I would look at the calendar and see, well, this is going to be when close to the to prom and this is going to be this and all these last. Mm -hmm. And I felt like a little bit torn. Yeah. And I went and talked to my husband and he said, why do you feel torn? We always said, Lord, we'll say yes as long as we have peace. Right. We'll say yes to this. But when we don't feel peace anymore, we're going to assume that you're changing the season. And he said, what do you want in this season? And I said, I want to be present for everything. I don't want to miss a thing. Kind of went back and I, I said no to everything. I declined all of the invitations that year. I didn't do any travel and I didn't miss a thing. And that might not be the right thing for everybody, but it was so much what my mm -hmm. mom heart wanted. And I didn't feel like I was abandoning something that the Lord had given me. I felt like seasonally, the season to do that had shifted. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to be malleable like that because I, I think sometimes we hold on and then we add it on to something yeah. else. And yeah. the way when you talk about the crystal versus the plastic for me, where that resonated is I recognized, though I know God opens doors and he wants you there. I, I you know, if you're asked to be at a certain place, that's for you. Okay. But also those types of events someone else can do them. <laughs> Come on. Right. Someone right. else can. Absolutely. No true. one else could be her mom. That's right. true. No that one else so was able true. to be her mom. And so that was the crystal versus the plastic. Yeah. And I love when I get to do those. But in that moment, my heart was yeah. only seeking the crystal mm -hmm. because I just didn't want to miss mm -hmm. something I knew I could never get back. And I wanted to be to her what no one else could be. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that helps us establish. Yeah. Balance, balance and order is prioritizing what are the things only That's I right. can do? Yeah. Right. What are the things, and is there something someone else can do? There's a lot of things that can be thrown at you in a new season and you're just taking it as it comes. Woo, I've never been a part of this thing and oh, this is a new you know, situation. And I think it's just really important that, especially if you're married, I would say for me and my husband, we take time where we, when we head into new seasons, we take time to talk about what does the season look like? What are we going to say yes to? What are we going to say no to? Don't assume just because it was in the last season that God has it for you in this season. I was a, a small group leader for many years, but every season I had to ask the Lord, are you still calling me to do that? Because there would be something else coming that I didn't know He knew, but I didn't know. So He might be directing me in a different way. So I think it's really important that you, one, take time and with your spouse or with a significant you know, person in your life, talk about what does this next season look like? And then two, I think really prioritize what your heart desires. I don't know if we talk about it enough that um, God places these desires in our heart. I, I spoke about um, my, my daughter and her, it being her senior year and I wanted to really be a part of everything. I didn't want to miss anything. Well, I think God really wanted that for me. You know, he's just a, such a loving father. And so I placed that as a priority. And because I did, other things worked around it. And then I had to say no to some things. So I think it's really important that you even 
Ask yourself, what do you want in this season? What would a, a successful, happy you look like in this season? That's okay to ask that question and then begin to put things in order from that. You know, I think of some women that I've worked with um, as a counselor who think that they're the only ones who can do everything. Mm -hmm. If I don't do it, nobody else will. If I don't do this for my child or for my husband or for my extended family or for my cousins, uncles, aunts, or for my coworkers mm -hmm. or for my church ministry mm -hmm. or for, and then you end up living a very empty life. To me, a lot of that is a mindset shift. You know, you are so good to be able to identify the few things that God has called you to that only you can do. Mm -hmm. But I know so many women who struggle with feeling like they're the only ones that can do, and then the list is just too long, mm -hmm. and, and they mm -hmm. can't bear the burden of it, mm -hmm. and they literally live their life just basically they're sacrificing themselves on the altar of what everybody else needs from them. Yeah. And oftentimes when you come from a family culture or a childhood where there was a lot of chaos, everything was on your shoulders at a young age prematurely. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe your parents got a divorce and you were the primary point person mm -hmm. that held it all together. You know, maybe there was um, an abandonment issue. Your, your dad left the family and, and you felt like you had to be there for your mom. And a lot of times we carry those things into our adult life and we're living with that same mindset of I have to keep it all together and if I don't, it's all going to fall apart. So sometimes in God showing us what we need to let go of, mm -hmm. we got to do a little digging. Like mm -hmm. where did this mindset come from to begin with? Why do you feel like you have to do it all? Mm -hmm. Why do you feel wrong and guilty about saying no? Mm -hmm. Why are you so comfortable just living on E every single day? And sometimes that unbalance, like you said earlier, Sheila, is a signal yeah. of something that God wants to heal inside of us. I definitely had that because, I mean, obviously it's going back you know, a lot of years, but because I was kind of, as a child, a central figure in my father being removed from the home, for reasons I didn't understand for years, after his brain injury, he never touched my brother and he never touched my sister. And until the last day, he never hurt my mom. It was only me. Mm -hmm. And that was very hard for me to understand as a young person. It mm -hmm. just made me think, there's mm -hmm. something really wrong with me, which made me keep people at a distance for years. Yeah. Like keep a wall up because it was like, if you get too close, you'll see whatever it was my dad saw. It was only in later years, a friend of mine who's a neurosurgeon explained that sometimes when there's an extreme brain injury, the person instinctively hits out at the one person they believe will love them no matter what. Oh, but you wow. don't get that when you're five. Wow. Of course. So I definitely wow. felt, because we lost our home and car, all the things that were normal, I felt like it was up to me to make sure that everybody else in the family was okay. So much that I remember when I was maybe 12 and it was coming up to a birthday for my mom and I thought, there's nobody now in my mom's life that gets her a big present. Like my dad would get her a big present and now there's no one. And so I packed a suitcase one day and took it to school with all my, if we didn't have Barbie, we had Cindy. All my Cindy <laughs> dolls, my books, little pieces of jewelry that kids have, everything I had. And I sold it all for the next few days at school wow. so that I could buy my mom oh my a big gift because I felt like that's... It's so up to me now that it's taken, it took me years for the Lord to mm. be able to untangle all that and with yeah. some really wow. great counseling as well to understand that you don't have to be, you don't have to be Jesus, you get to be you. You're not everybody's savior. We all feel pressure at times in our lives to do or to be what other people expect us to do or to be. And there are many of us who know the angst that comes with trying to do it. I'm thinking we can, getting up earlier, staying up later, having to-do lists that seem to grow longer by the minute. There comes a point in your life when you realize either by decision or by burnout that being everything to everyone and doing what everyone wants you to do isn't possible. It's not possible. We all have limits starting with 24 hours in a day. The moment that you realize that the only thing that matters is what God has called you to do, 
And if someone asks you to do something and it aligns with what God is asking you to do, then you do it. And if it doesn't, you say, I love you, God bless you. But no, the moment you decide to align first with God's plans for you and to kindly reject everyone else's plans, that'll be the moment that you know what it is to live free. Yeah, because sometimes we try to fill up by just tweaking our external environment. Like, oh, I'm just going to clear out my schedule this week, or I'm just going to exercise a little bit more. But if we're not getting to the root of why we keep getting to that point, why we keep people pleasing, why we Mm -hmm. keep, you know, sacrificing ourselves, why we don't feel like we're worthy of care, we're just going to keep doing it. Yeah. You know, God's got to figure out, We help us figure out where the, the, the holes are that need to get plugged up. It's not just about filling, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's about plugging up the holes mm-hmm. where we're pouring out needlessly. And thank God, you know, like sometimes I think this stuff sounds overwhelming, like, oh, I have to do all this stuff. But to me, it's like God is trusting us to heal. He, Mm -hmm. in his mercy and love, Mm -hmm. he wants us to heal. He wants us to live abundantly and to do it better. So it's, it's such a beautiful invitation. And I think we have the tendency to sit and listen to this and be like, oh, how luxurious. (laughs) But honestly, it's not luxurious. It's a necessity. necessity. This is an emergency. Mm -hmm. If we don't care for ourselves, Mm -hmm. Mm Yeah. There's so many people who will be hurt in the aftermath mm-hmm. of that. So, mm-hmm. like, and I'm not just talking about manicures, pedicures. Like, we're talking about deeper soul work mm-hmm. to stay in that that mm-hmm. balance and that mm-hmm. rhythm. It That's is so a necessity. True. It's not just a luxury. And the Lord needs us to be healthy mm-hmm. so that we can do what He's called us to do in a in a more effective, more anointed way. I think the struggle with feeling empty is that so many times we go to empty things to fill ourselves up. We go to screens, we go to Netflix, we go to food, we go to alcohol, we go to drugs, we go to pornography. There's so many unhealthy things that people go to to get filled up. Things that don't work because empty things can't fill up empty people. So what it looks like to get really, truly filled is to go to things that can actually fill us. And I think the first thing is our relationship with God. Connecting with God and His people can be so filling and fulfilling. I think another way that we can fill up is to take care of our body. The Bible says that our body is a temple. It's a temple of God. And so to nourish our body with proper food, hydration, and movement, is another way that we honor our bodies and fill up. I also think we can fill up by setting boundaries and protecting ourselves, protecting our schedules, protecting our time, protecting our energy, protecting our calling. Another way we fill up is by enjoying life and savoring the life that God has given us, being thankful, being present, being here, and now, not distracted by all of the worries of life. And those are some ways that we can fill up in a healthy way rather by going to empty things that ultimately can't fill us up. Most women, I th- and I think struggle especially women, that. struggle to wow. know, I don't know, what does fill wow. me up? What I- I'm so used to filling others up, I don't wow. really haven't taken the time to figure out what fills me up. So it might take a minute for or us you, to or think you might about know it. and you hesitate because mm-hmm. maybe you feel like is this silly mm-hmm. for me a real way i'm just going to say it that i fill up is in my private prayer language mm-hmm. whenever i'm with the lord and i don't have the words to say i'm needing my heart to be ministered to in a way that i don't even know how to explain and for me it's really that. it's really just a it's a very personal thing for me but I can't tell you. I mean, it scripturally, it speaks of that in a way that edifies you personally. Mm-hmm. It's meant for personal edification, personal encouragement. And it's a real tool for me mm. that has really been helpful in my I spiritual walk mm. um, because there's just utterances I don't know how to say. <laughs> there's yeah, things that right, I don't yeah. know, there's words I don't know how yeah. to say that my spirit can utter. And so, 
I, I would say for me that is more of a personal one mm -hmm. that I wouldn't just share yeah. with everyone, but I would on national TV. Know, right? <laughs> everyone can't know it's that. It's just us. Just us. You know? Don't worry about it. But <laughs> along the same lines, for me, it's uh, worship mm -hmm. and worship songs. Mm -hmm. Did you know that Jesus sang songs in Scripture? Mm -hmm. When I when I read that, I was like, it just make singing, you know, knowing that even Jesus sang songs with his disciples. Even as he left the upper room and they went down to the, they were yes. singing those songs mm -hmm. yes. from Passover. And I feel like there's something really special about that. For you, you know, you talked about almost like borrowing the words of the Spirit. For me, in worship, I'm kind of borrowing mm -hmm. the words of people of faith yeah. who have gone before and That's and good. just letting my heart just praise. I have... I have worship music playing. You wouldn't believe in the weirdest places all over my house. We have a speaker in the bathroom. When my littlest was just a little bit younger and still needed a stroller, I had a speaker on the stroller, like everywhere. And honestly, sometimes during the day when I feel like I'm starting to feel mm -hmm. overwhelmed, um, we're a homeschooling family and there's a lot of like needs yeah. and and I oftentimes will reset the environment by right. putting on worship it music. Does. It just does. like it just resets it everything it changes and the changes. fills me up and shifts my perspective. And so, so for me, and there's two probably. Mm -hmm. Say that again. And there's two because I can be yes. in a bunch of crazy. Yeah. Yes. And I'll just put on something. All of a sudden, everyone's like, I mean, they're not like floating or anything, but it's just kind of like everyone just kind of. It's true. It does yeah. something. It yeah. does something in the atmosphere. I find worship to be yeah. so filling for my for my heart. If any of us have flown before, it's an analogy you've probably heard before, but when you fly, the instructions that the flight attendant gives you, if there were to be any kind of loss of cabin pressure, is that when the oxygen comes down, that you would put it on yourself first, your little oxygen mask, and then you would help others who need their oxygen mask. And the spiritual principle behind that is a really profound one in that uh, the way that God designed us to be someone that pours out to others. You know, we are the hands and feet of Jesus. Everything about the Great Commission is one of pouring out. We will go, therefore, and make disciples. We will go and tell the good news. All of that is contingent upon the fact that you can go. So first, the question you have to ask is, have I put my oxygen mask on me? Am I balanced in my life? Am I putting things in place that when God says go, I can go? When God says help, I can go help. When God says meet this need, I can do it. And the reason is because I have learned to put the oxygen mask on myself first. So it's super important. We talk about, oh yeah, just make sure you have a balanced life. But why? Because if you don't, then you will not be able to fulfill the the promises and the will that God has for your life. It's that important that you learn what balance looks like. Now, again, remember, it doesn't mean that everything is equal and that you're doing it perfectly, but it does mean that you are cognizant in your mind that God is ordering your steps because you have to fill up so you can pour out. I was going to add friends. There's my girls that can just, I feel full, whatever mm -hmm. it can be. We could all be crying. Yeah. But I, we, you know, it's just something about Community, these women. Yeah. Yes. But I was also going to say lately is margin has been feeling. So to your 85% yeah. idea, mm -hmm. I have set my schedule in a way. Now I could never do this before. This is, this is the first time this year that have everybody <laughs> going to some type of school. Because I was like, if y'all don't go, I'm going to go. <laughs> Somebody's going. Somebody is getting on the bus. Okay. <laughs> so, but it's just, I set time where it's like, I have nothing. So I can fill that with mm. coffee with a friend. Oh, I love it. Someone I'm, and I just never know what that space, but if, any, if anyone ever says, hey, I'd love to meet, or That's hey, I'd want to do this, I fill it with that space. And that margin has been amazing. And you can't feel right. guilty about that because no. you know you could fill it with laundry yes. 100%. and dishes and right. cleaning mm -hmm. and scrubbing toilets. Like there's always something. There's always something I could be doing. But if I don't go anywhere, if I don't meet with someone, I sit mm. wow. or I do whatever I want to do. Mm -hmm. And that's just been like, this is just built in every Tuesday morning mm -hmm. that this is what I'm going to do. Here's when I can meet or not meet. And if I'm not meeting, I'm doing something else. And but I don't what, know what I that love looks. is it speaks back to the system. You, you intentionally put that mm -hmm. in. It's a system that you put in yeah. place that now operates and works for you. Because mm -hmm. I think that that is a practical thing that actually helps it does. people. I, I remember... Um, my father-in-law, who's a pastor, tells a story about he was with another pastor and they were talking and they're best friends as well. And 
the the other pastor had gotten a phone call and something, you know, can you can you have this meeting at, you know, whatever, Tuesday at three? And my father-in-law knew that Tuesday at three, he had nothing going mm-hmm. on, but he told the person on the phone that he he wasn't available. Mm-hmm. So he got on the phone and thinking that he was being a good friend, holding accountable to, you know, little white lies or whatever, he was like, I, I know you don't have anything. Why did you tell that person that you did? And he said, because that's what margin is. That's what wow. you do. Wow. In my schedule, the fact that I put time in for nothing is still scheduled nothing. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah. that's good. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not lying to say I can't yeah. meet with you. This mm-hmm. is a scheduled That's time, right. and for my father-in-law, who is he would never think of mm-hmm. that. He it was so life changing well, for him. Yeah. It's not wrong to say, no, that laundry you're going to wait because I have, this is scheduled time. Mm -hmm. I have an appointment with myself. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's what I'll do. And I'll either go to breakfast by myself Mm -hmm. or we'll sit and I'll talk or a conversation might happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if nothing, if I have nothing on that Tuesday and someone says, hey, Tuesday, you know, that morning, I might be like, you know what? I do have time today. Mm -hmm. And so that works out perfectly. Mm -hmm. The great thing about being so intentional about that is if you don't do that, you suddenly find yourself at the end of another day mm. and there was no time. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you schedule time, there is time. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I think of building your life on, it's like a chair, you know, a stool can have three legs, it can have four. But then there are certain things in life that are not about enjoyment and it's not even about um, what you're not doing. It's just these things help me stand up. We're talking about finding rest in the stressed out world. What are the things that de-stress and that bring life? And if they're consistently in there, um, that they bring support. And so, you know, having quiet time is one of those things. And getting a good night's sleep is one of those things. But for me also, there are signals of, it's like signs of life, you know, where's the pulse? There are things that I, if I'm not doing them, they are signals that things are out of balance. Mm. And they're not like really bad or really joyful. They're like really basic. Mm -hmm. And so like one of those things is I'm going to always be reading something. But if I'm reading fiction, that means there's a good pulse because it's just for enjoyment. It's not just for go, 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 go. Or there are things that I want to make sure I'm leaving room for in my life. I started piano lessons at one point again and singing on the praise team. And if I'm not doing one of those things that's a musical involvement, Hmm then that means I'm probably not in a good place because that's what is a sign of life for me. Mm. If we are eating food, and it's not necessarily bad, like fast food bad, just there's not a pacing in the kitchen or enjoyment cooking the food because I'm rushing having to get food on the table. Mm -hmm. If I'm not able to enjoy that time in the kitchen, then there's probably something, you know, so there's like Little things where I can go, as soon as this is out, I could be getting enough exercise, but if I haven't gone to a spin class in a while, things are probably too packed. And so it's like in the middle of aiming for Sabbath and looking for joy. It's like, what are the things that I want in this season of my life Mm -hmm. to be a part of the rhythms of my life that say I'm standing Mm -hmm. in a very balanced place? That's really good, And from season to season— those legs may change, yeah. right. but there are probably a handful of things that we can count on and say, if I'm living the life I feel like God wants me to live, leaving room for Sabbath, that's a command, making room for joy and things that make me smile and laugh. But in the middle, what mm-hmm. are these things that are just basic legs mm-hmm. for my right. life to feel balanced in this season right. and looking for those that help? Can I ask you a question? That's Do good. people know what those are? Like, So sometimes, you know, you may know those, but it may take you a while to get back on track or to, rem- but like, does your husband know what these are? So he's like, do, you have not been to a, sp- or you have not, we have not cooked or yeah, do you yeah. have people that are helping you to, to watch? Cause I feel That's like that question. would be. Yes and no, but they can't help me if they don't know. Right. So oh, it is good. my responsibility to mm-hmm. tell them, to tell them, not necessarily their responsibility to notice. Mm. I think it's amazing if you have people in yeah, your life yeah. that notice and help you stay on track. I think but the fact that you know yeah. mm-hmm. is the most important because thing. Because like I said a yeah. minute ago, sometimes we, we don't, don't even, even know, know mm-hmm. much less yeah. to communicate it to the people yeah. around us. Right. It's like, True. well, I don't know what those legs are. What mm-hmm. does keep me in balance? What does fill me up? If you go right back to the beginning of the Bible, and I don't know how long it is since you've done that, but if you read the first couple of chapters of Genesis and you see this pattern that God laid out of how he created the heavens and the earth, 
And we're told that for six days God worked, and then on the seventh He rested. And I think that's a very interesting. It's not as if God worked for three days and then rested for three days and then worked again. It was six days and one. And I think that's a beautiful pattern for us because I know you have a busy life. You know, we all have busy lives. And we've been given six days to accomplish all the things that we have been called to do. But then God has shown us so clearly if we want to be doing well in our, you know, we sing, it is well with my soul. But if, it want, if we want it to be well with our soul, then I think we understand God has told us you need to take that portion of your life to give you margin to breathe, to hear the voice of God, to reevaluate the week, to look at what's ahead. I think that's a beautiful pattern that God has given us to follow. Maybe the Lord is challenging all of us mm -hmm. to find out what those are. And of course, we know that He is one of those legs. Yeah. He's yeah. the chair, right? He's like, right. He's he's all, all, holds he's all it all yeah. together. <laughs> yeah. But also for us to have enough self-awareness to know yeah. what does it mean for me to be filled and what does yeah. that look like? And, so good. And Lord, reveal to me what legs need to be steadied in my life, what areas, maybe it's your physical health. You're not moving, you're not mm -hmm. eating well, mm -hmm. you're not exercising. Maybe it's your emotional health. Maybe it's connecting with friends and, and allowing people to fill you up. Maybe it's just learning to save your life and enjoy a slower pace and be present. Um, but, you know, let's just ask the Holy Spirit to help us yeah. and, and to fill us up as, as we do. Jesus, we just thank you that you want us to be filled. It is your will for us to be filled, God. It is your will for us to live life and life abundant. And we just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity um, to, to do your work and your will. And we thank you, God, that you will meet us where we're at if we come thirsty. And so here we are, Lord, asking for your filling, asking that you would fill us up mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically so that we can continue to pour out and commit to the calling that you've placed on our life as friends, as wives, as mothers, as ministers of the gospel, as neighbors, as, as workers, God. Um, we just thank you that you want us to be filled. I pray that you would help us this week to slow down and to look for the signals, signals that show us that we're nearing empty and that we need to stop and rest and receive from you, God. Help us to have self-awareness and, and to know what we need, God. And, we just thank you that when we come to you empty, you will always refresh and fill us. And so we're asking for your filling. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Connect with us on social media and let us know how our team can pray for you. I think it's really important that we stay in tune to how we're feeling, how filled we feel. If I asked you to tell me how full do you feel in this season right now on a scale of zero to 10, what would your answer be? Some signs that we aren't full could look like burnout, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, having no energy or no excitement for the things that we used to get excited about. Maybe we're feeling more apathetic than usual, more irritable than usual, more tired than usual. If that's you, I don't want you to feel shame. What I want you to do is realize that your body is sending you a signal, a signal to stop and pay attention to what's going on from the inside out, a signal that maybe it's time to focus in, set some boundaries, and care for your soul a little bit better. Maybe it's time to find balance and figure out what fills you up. God is quick to be near to those who need filling. He's quick to pour out His living waters over those of us who need to feel refreshed. But the first step is to realize that we're empty and then ask Him for help.